Peace and love. Welcome to the Andy Warhol Museum. My name is Quayshawn Whitlock. I'm an artist educator here at the museum in the Learning Public Engagement Department. I'm currently joined with a good friend, mentor, and artist here in Pittsburgh. Uh, his name is Daryl D.S. Kenzel. Hey! Yeah! <laughs> truly, truly honored to have him here in the space today. We're just sitting in the Andy Warhol Museum lobby space right now. Looking forward to having a conversation about the uh, current collection upstairs that is depicting Warhol and Basquiat's collaboration. Yeah, and you know, some of the artifacts that we'll be discussing really show the everyday life of Basquiat. You know, we get a lot of romanticized um, renditions of his story, or we get a lot of kind of superhero uh, renditions of his story, but you know, the namely the trash can lid and his shoes that are on display here you know those are two things that really kind of center who this person was they center his existence um it shows you you know we have those things in our studio that we share right now right, right, right. you know for those items to be archived and kept and you know match with other pictures within the collection to ensure that it did belong to Basquiat <laughs> yeah. and you know you look at the shoes and how tattered they are and every every time you think about Basquiat people are um, describing his aesthetic you know Jay-Z has the Basquiat hair now mm -hmm. uh, people talk about he, him being dressed in expensive suits all the time and still maybe doing graffiti or still painting in the studio and having paint splattered clothes all the time um, as what it really comes down to for me I mean being a fan of Basquiat having him heavily influenced my work that it's kind of makes you giddy. It's a little exciting to get in there and be like, wow, I've seen these paintings. It's amazing to see them in real life, but that's his palette. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? like that's his tool that he actually took around and uh, imagine him maybe holding it with the paint, with, with the uh, little pizza style perhaps mm -hmm, and carrying mm -hmm. it around. Cause I mean, it's a garbage can lid, so it's, it's pretty big. Yeah, so it's got some size, got some heft to it. And, 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 to, you, uh, and you see him kind of making the everyday material artistic mm -hmm. you see him making the everyday material uh something that is elevated you know so it's like this trash can lid in new york which is probably one of the dirtiest <laughs> filthiest nastiest no one wants to touch it no one wants to do anything with a trash can in new york city in the 80s and you know this this amazing black artist used it as his tool and you know even a young person they may not be able to afford you know the traditional artist palette that you see thumb, right? yeah with the yeah. thumb <laughs> yeah. i've never owned one of those right? right but if you come to the museum and a young person or an artist wherever they may, may be in their career they see that palette from basquiat and it's like that's I got, real that's yeah. real i got a trash can <laughs> lid i got a right. wood piece like right. he was right. just getting to it even when he had these probably super expensive shoes on the, i kind of I'm, I'm a lover of process um whether it is in the realm of printmaking or whether it is the realm of acrylic paints and actually building the canvas, stretching your canvas uh -huh. and to try to take that piece and separate it out from it even being an art piece material. Yeah. That is a painting that is yeah. sitting in there yeah. and it's kind of, it has this historical resonance to it, but it could easily be sitting next to the canvases on the wall. You know what I mean? And it is not necessarily what he was pushing for, I'm sure, whenever he created or walked around with that palette, but you know what I mean? It is this dynamic life of the art you know this kind of it isn't just what i'm creating or you know what it looks like when it's on the gallery wall but this is how i actually live this is like how i'm getting through the day you know what i mean it's Got shoes culture on. <laughs> hey, man. you know I'm like culture, it's culture just being displayed before us because the shoes and the trash can lid what kind of separates it from the artifact or the art piece on the wall um is the trash can lid is outside of criticism. Hmm. The shoes are outside of criticism. There's nothing that anybody can say or write about the trash can or the shoes because they were yeah. there. They were just there. He's not here with us anymore. 
you know, we could probably scrape a little bit of something off there and make a box of clone if there was like if this was like a Halloween Simpsons episode and or something, you know. You said that the first time. That's true. I was like, I guess you could right? do something like, like that. And those items are outside of criticism. So, you know, they're they're less a part of the art world even and to me are more a part of culture, like right. a part of hip hop culture to a certain degree. Right? So when I got here into the into the gallery and I see this abstract work it's a you know collaboration so between three artists yeah. you know i wrote down this is a collaboration between uh, a queer artist a black artist and an immigrant you know we're talking about an issue you know that not only happens stateside but is you know police brutality is a global issue mm -hmm. um so there's and then and then there's this sculpture is this like pile this sculpture of canvas twisted you know, I mean, warped. It has some screen printing like on it. it has yeah, some painting yeah, on it. Has like some gesso piles on it. It looks like. You know, the store. This is uh, was it September fifteenth, nineteen eighty three. Uh, there's an individual, Michael Stewart, who a graffiti was artist. graffiti artist in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, who was essentially tagged by a traffic, a traffic cop man or police, like one of them PA, the public. Port Authority cops essentially safety, like around here. Yeah, safety enforcement um, for the subway system. Safety enforcement, making sure people aren't tagging or doing anything like that. Um, caught him with a felt marker, took him, um, apprehended him, arrested him. Um, he was essentially, uh, what would you say, pronounced as dead. And about 12 hours later, they actually brought him back to life. Mm -hmm. um, he was comatose for 13 days after that, and then he passed away. Now you always see there's this interesting video of Keith Haring being arrested yeah. for doing street art, um, but Michael Stewart did not get to make it that far. Indeed. And, you know, Basquiat was seen in public or he was recorded in public essentially saying that that could have been me. You know, there was this yep. super bold quote out in the world, you know, that could have been me. And, of course, being a black man, a young black man in New York City and graffiti arts. Yep. So, literally, you know, by... By the, the times or the events of the universe, that could have been him. I think um, we've all experienced, you know, being respected in one space and then in the public space not being respected as a black person. Mm. You know, you can be, to an effect, he was a star employee, right? Right. You know, star employee of the art world, totally respected at work, mm. get everything he want, all the drugs, all the money, all the friendships, relationships situationships that he could ever want but how hard was it for him to catch a damn taxi cab at that point I mean, you know so or like you said like he's saying it could have been me like if he just decided well let me go on the b train for old time's sake and uh hit a couple get ups real quick and we're talking about 1983 yeah and you know this is an issue that unfortunately in 2021 that we still face still so i can't even I can't even walk into that gallery space and, you know, take that into account as something that could have happened. Like, that is that is just as present to me now as it was to Basquiat in 1983, and that is profound. Yeah. Or the fact that Michael Stewart, um, Michael Stewart's essentially his narrative and what happened to him is very, very similar to individuals happening right now. You know, we have individuals who were essentially put under the same exact conditions. 30 years, 40 years later, and the same thing happened? And I think that's one of the the conversations an archiving institution has to have with itself and with the public. To see that work here and to know it's part of the Warhol's archive. Like, it hasn't traveled. They've been here chilling in Pittsburgh. And, you know, they might have took a little bit to get it out there, but it's out here now and it's part of the conversation. And, mm -hmm. and the institution is investigating, okay, how can we contribute to the conversation? You know, in ways maybe we haven't before, in ways we may have um, not known how to before. And, you know, for me to see that piece, I was kind of blown away by it because, number one, you don't know it exists mm -hmm. simply. Two, you don't see works by Basquiat in that way or in that realm. So, you know, just, just to have that here in Pittsburgh is just a great treasure. And knowing that those things belong to the institution, we have an opportunity to see those things over and over again. Or, you know, someone come in with new eyes and new interpretations of an exhibition and something new might be uncovered. Hmm.